Coach is Rick Stewart with AllAccessCoaching.com. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below so we can let you know when new content's been uploaded. So this right here, um, if you guys can see this, this, this is our base, um, <clears throat> our rules for mid-triple. Um, this, this is kind of how um, we start from ground zero. And I'll start, you know, with, with the front side um, offense alignment. So when we run mid-triple, four out of our five offense alignment are doing the exact same thing as mid-double. So, you know, when we run uh, mid-triple to the right, that play for us is, is 30. That, that's what we call it. 30 is mid-triple to the right. 31 is mid-triple to the left. Uh, 10 is mid-double to the right. And 11 <laughs> is mid-double to, to the left. So if our right guard center, whatever, our right guard back, if they know how to run 10, they know how to run 30. And same thing, like, you know, our center or our guard, our play side guard back, if they know how to run 31, they know how to run 11. And you know, so, so that's exactly how we install this thing. So if you know how to run one play, you know how to run two. And it's the exact same with zone dive. Four out of our five offense linemen, zone dive is the exact same thing, exact same rules as triple. So if you know two plays in our system, you know four. And, and, and that's how we, you know, we try to use as many same as principles as possible. So um, you know, our play side guard right here, I'm going to start him work back. He's going to veer and clear. So he's going to veer to slice, whatever it is. It's veer and clear the cylinder. So whoever number one is, the handoff key in the mid, um, he's going to veer and clear. For us, and I'll say this, for our number one or our handoff key for mid is the first thing that it, that is a shade and out. So we label the shade as number one, a shade to the center, um, but we do not read him. You know, we're going to call him. That's going to be an automatic pool. We're going to make a PP call, but we're going to label him as one still. And then that D end and that even front, if it's a shade and a five is going to be number two. Um, so that's kind of how we do it. Number one is the first thing shade out. Number two is the first immediate threat outside number one. And that's our pitch key in the mid triple. So um, our play side guard is going to very clear. He's going to get underneath number one. If number one is a four eye and it's an odd front, he's going to clear the cylinder. So, you know, we're going to slice out the back door and, and we'll talk about that, how important that is and how, why we slice. Um, and it's, we, we feel like it with the, with the twirl action and um, the tackle down through the four technique in the guard and center working away as a linebacker, if I'm reading that action away from the play, if I see B back diving right at me and then I see, uh, slice out the back door, I immediately feel a because that's what every uh, B gap linebacker in the odd front in America does. They're going to sit right here, and then now they've locked themselves in the box, and we can pull it off the four eye and pitch it off the outside linebacker fast. So, you know, that action um, is kind of where we start to the odd front. Um, the center is backside A gap, right? He's going to, he's going to, he's either going to fill and block back um, in the even front, or we're going to slice a nose guard or, or shoot back out the back door. Um, our backside guard and tackler are gap hinging by rule. That's what they're going to do. So that we're working A, B, C out the back door with our center back. Uh, our guard is, like I said, is clearing the cylinder, always protecting underneath number one if it's the even front. Our, our tackle is best path to the play side linebacker. That's where we start. So whatever that is, he's going right to that backer. Best way he can get there. Um, our quarterback, we push and pivot. Um, that's what we do with our footwork, and you'll see that to clear the track. It's really easy. Um, you know, we used to drop step, but we had issues leaning through the mesh. So we, we now we push and, and, and pivot, sit real tall, um, you know, plant the heel, point the toe, all that good stuff. Um, our B-back is we're right down the crack of the center. So, you know, our B-back is running that track. He's always going to stay underneath number one. Quarterback's always going to stay underneath number two. Um, our slots. So this is where we're, we're a lot different. Um, so our play slide slot, we twirl. And his aim and point out of his twirl is he's going to go hands, hands. So we want to get hands and then a step and a half at the snap. So, you know, we don't actually hit our twirl of bounce until after the ball's been snapped. So everything looks like it's going the other way. We get safety rotation, um, you know, backer sees action away. He fills. It's really, really good stuff. So, but because our, our arcing slot is twirling and going in motion, we have to work with a stationary pitch path. And the main thing, the biggest secret to, to the mid triple is we got to get our backside A back in the quarterback's vision to get it triggered fast. 
And the way we do this is we go right through the hands of the B-back. And what I mean by when our B-back set, his heels are at five, his hands are about at four, our A-back's aiming point is he's, he's smoking right through the fingertips of the B-back to get in the quarterback's vision. And that's what he's doing. So he will probably get there at about three and a half to four steps. And then we're getting back downhill on seven, starting to angle back down. But he's going to get to the heel line of the B-back at an angle through the hands of the B-back. Um, here, here's some stuff that, that we rep every single day, some mid-drill stuff. So here's our footwork with our with our play side. So he's going to start with the weight on his play side foot. He's going to push off his play side foot right there and pick up his backside. He'll be called push and pivot. So we're going to push off our play side foot and pivot on our backside foot and slam the heel down to sit tall through the mesh. We're going to sit upright and be patient, right? Because we want our backside A back to get in our vision. We can't run through the mesh because we'll get handcuffed or handicapped, right? We'll get jammed there or we'll collision with the B back through our face. And then also we want that A back to get out there. So we want to be fast getting set like in the mesh mechanics. And then we want to be slow through the mesh in our mesh window, toe to toe. And then we can be fast out of the mesh again. So we want to be fast, slow, fast. That's what we want to do. So we put that ball right there on our backside foot of our quarterback. Our B back ought to hit his third step right there at the backside foot of, of the quarterback uh, working that mesh zone. So that B back is going to work through the mesh window from his third step to his fourth step. So that's that that's a perfect mesh track right there. So we're working all the different looks of mid triple. That was a mid triple give, and now it's a sit and pitch. So you can see me right there turning the shoulders, um, being a number two. If we got a three technique and a five, you know the three squeeze. I turn my shoulders. He's sitting and pitching. Bam! Right there. Now it's this is called a two ball drill. Now we're coming at it, and now I'm skating. So now the the guy's taking a dive. Number two, me is skating with his shoulders squared down the line of scrimmage. And I skated wide. Now he's tucking it. One, two, three, getting downhill. And then that's kind of how we teach it. So you see our quarterback still going to mesh. He's going to push off around the collision right there. One, he's going to have a second step. is going to be a, a crossover step to, to, to start to get downhill. And then his third step is coming right downhill. Okay, we want to place that guy's feet. We want to, we want to play downhill. So, But we got to be patient in the mesh to let the A-back get out there. I mean, that is the secret. That, that's what you got to do. Here's another angle at it. So here's a three technique right here. He steps up the field. There's our third step, right, with our B-back it reads give. So that bag right there, it symbolizes the guard's block on the play side linebacker if it reads give. So our B-back's going to slide with his fourth step, boom, right around that guard. So we want to sink on three, what I mean by that, on his third step and slide on four. So sink on three, then we slide off our fourth step right there. So this is the two ball drill. Now he will have taken dive with his eyes. Now his quarterback's eyes on number Number two, sitting and pitching. There I am, a turn shoulders. Here's the next look. He squeezes. He's a runner. So we'll work this drill all the time. We'll work inside out pitches. Um, here's the mid drill again. Now twirls. Here's some of our A back twirl drills. And, you know, I, I would love to get into to the mechanics, but they're stepping at the hands of the B back for two. So hands, hands. So the ball wouldn't be snapped with a good cadence because we're down. Ready, set, go. We snap it on the R and ready. You know, so like they're going, excuse me, they're going on the R and ready. So, you know, ideally they'll be right there, both of them, when the ball is snapped. So, you know, we want to be a step and a half cycle. So the ball is snapped, and then now their hammer plant bounce back to four yards. And now they're going to try to stretch the arc is what they're going to try to do. So you can kind of see it right here. I'll let it play. Let me let it play, play, play all the way through. I'm going to back this off here watch them go um we'll let it play live but you can some they're gonna hammer plant and bounce back to back to four yards deep so we can try to really stretch that force player and self reach so they'll go you know they're going on cadence you know, their hammer plant bounce boom right back there so we use this agile to kind of guide their angle and it makes them it makes them plant and bounce back behind it to get that depth so we really like using that agile Here's another one, a close up. So like I said, the ball will be snapped right there. So it looks like motion, ball snapped. He gets into his plants and now he's bouncing for depth back to four yards deep, boom, boom. So let me know if you guys have any questions about that, start dropping them in. Um, now here's some spacing stuff, you know, so you can kind of see this backside A back where he, where he leaves and departs. Um, 
See, there's the snap, right? Because he can't leave until the ball snapped. So he's getting straight through the heels of the B-back, and now he's planning and bouncing. And we want to build this tight relationship between this front A-back and the back A-back. And I'll talk about that later, why that relationship is so important. So there's two relationships that we got to maintain during, during this play. And one is the pitch relationship with the quarterback. We got to get out there in this vision. We got to play downhill together, but also it's the relationship between these two guys, because, you know, if there's, he's blocking a stud out here and he goes out here and he blocks him. This guy's like way back here. Well, he can dip around him. He could do whatever he could blow him up, shed and make a play and still make that play. Well, if he's too tight, let's say he's right there, then he could just go right through his knees or like blow him up and bottle all that thing up. Well, if we're about three to four yards apart, right there in that sweet spot, this guy can either go in or out or bottle. Well, this, there's enough space where this guy is always going to make this guy right. So we want to not put too much stress on that front side A back by having a good relationship there. So we got to build those relationships in. And you'll kind of see how that works when, when we get in our drill, drill tape. So, so right here, you know, there's the three technique and there's five. So there's number one, the option count, there's number two, bam. So our quarterback's reading initial movement. As soon as he gets an initial movement, you remember this is a big, heavier dude. So, you know, if, if he collisions and compresses at all, that three technique that's veering underneath here, right? Or if you mean that guard that's veering underneath here, you know, that's a pull. And then his eyes immediately get to the edge. So this is the hardest fit. We'll go eyes, eyes. So he knows pull, he gets turned shoulders, which is pitch, and we're sitting and pitching. So the biggest thing that we need to work on here, right, is quarterback swinging and pivoting, right? Ball beats my feet, so his ball is already set on the track before his feet get down. Okay, his heels up, he's, he's, he's sitting tall and patient through the mesh. At the end of the mesh, there's his third step. Look, we're helmet to helmet or we're close. We're really okay, even if he's, even if he's right, right there. So if we're within a yard or closer, we want to be helmet to helmet's ideal. We're going to be in pitch relationship. So what can't happen is hit have a bad angle and be back here. And he gets a hot number two and he goes to pitch this ball and, and he can't see his pitch man. And then he, you know, they'll kind of freak out or, you know, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll not trust it anymore. And then like, they'll give up on the play. So, you know, but the biggest thing is patience by the quarterback and a great angle here. And then we build this relationship. See that good, tight relationship downhill together? So you can count this A back steps. He's getting through the hands of the B, right? His back steps, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And on his seventh step, he's starting to get downhill. And you'll really see it um, whenever we have to dip this guy, whenever number two is not as heavy and compressed and turns his shoulders, whenever he starts to slow play and play lateral, you'll start to see that more. Um, if that makes sense. So um, if you guys have any questions, just start dropping them in, but um, about kind of how we do it. So you will see our a back once he gets out of his twirl, he's still one, two, three, and he's starting to now get downhill off, off three steps out of his twirl. So we still want to play downhill, but like, because, you know, we're not going in motion, like triple with a backside guy, what we're doing is we're still trying to create our good pitch relationship and a back relationship between the two of them by meshing in this backside a gap now. So we're all, everything's just moving a gap tighter and we're trying to build that relationship back by taking that really good angle through the B backs heels all the way to five yards deep. And that's where we want to catch that ball. If we have to sit and pitch is right on the heel line of the B back, which is five yards deep. Now, if he would have pushed off around the collision, Let's see here. So this is not a front looking half line. So our quarterback pushes, but push and pivot. It's good. He's sitting real tall. He's patient. That's pretty good. Okay. Into the mesh. We're closer than a yard. We're in good shape. So now the quarterback's going to one, two, and he pitches it off second step because he gets turned shoulders. But what he would do is he take his third step. If I was still square here playing number two, because I want to see their eyes. Um, if I was still square, he would now on that third step start to dip downhill and we'd be dipping on our seventh as well, getting downhill. Okay. But he gets, he gets turned shoulders and he triggers that thing. Okay. We want to stretch this, this, this force player out here. You know, we won't, when we twirl and let's say this guy was in the line of scrimmage, like it was a four, two, one high, he was out here. Well, if we go out there and try to arc that guy, that's not a good angle. 
right? Because he's just going to come right up here and set the edge. So this twirl is really good for us because what it does is it sets this a -back plane back to four yards. So now if he's on the line of scrimmage, well, crap, you know, there's five yards between us. So he's going to have to come way up here to set the edge across the line of scrimmage. So now when I go out here to kick this guy, well, crap, you know, we can duck underneath that. There's all kinds of grass. Or we just run him up the field, which is now the alley's huge. You know, once if the force player is useless if he's passed the ball. So, you know, we, we, we try to use that to try to stretch that guy and make him play laterally. As you can see in the odd front, right, like I was talking about, you know, if you're an odd front backer and you got zone dive, belly, uh, inside veer coming right at you and you're an inside backer and you're reading under keys and you see that, you see this, this, be back at you and tackle right through, you are going to compress almost every single time unless you have a stunt on. Coaches Rich Stewart with AllAccessCoaching.com. I really hope this video helps make you a better coach. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below so we can let you know when new content becomes available because we're all about coaches helping coaches. And remember coach, better today, never as good as tomorrow.